Hello, all of you vain, gloriously wonderful people. This is the classic Broadway. And I'm about to find out if it'll off-road. This one's for you, classic. The car company. And the person. Who is my longest running Patreon supporter. And my dude, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No exaggeration. He has been a supporter of my channel putting his money where his support is uh, longer than anyone else. Um, and it is greatly appreciated. It really, truly, truly is. Um, and so I'm glad he finally got a car in the game. It only took you eight years, my friend. But you did it. Congrats. Had one in GTA 4. Had a couple in GTA 4, I think. Um, I don't know. I can't remember. It's been a long time. But that car sadly got rebranded as uh, the Classic, even though it still had the Classic logo on the front of it. What are you going to do? I think it does. Doesn't it still have the Classic logo? I think it does. But I love the Broadway. I think it's a beautiful car. Um, and it actually kind of impressed me here on the mountain. I was not expecting much out of either vehicle today. They're old, slow. They're in the muscles class. But they're just old, slow coupes and sedans. You know, just everyday, average cars. Like, this really should have been coupes, and the Eudora should have just been in sedans. Because we don't have a coupes classics or a sedans classics. They, neither one of these deserve to be a muscle. Uh, though I do know that, you know, a lot of these get hot-rodded. But as they are in the game, you know, the, the tops aren't chopped. The fenders aren't cutting down. You know, it, the bumpers aren't infringed. None of that stuff. So... They're not muscle cars. It's a coupe and a sedan. So I wasn't really expecting a whole lot. Neither car is fast. We're on a racetrack. Not really in terms of top speed. Look at that. It struggled right there, but it just kept going. And and that is what impressed me about this car. Yeah, it, it's not quick up the mountain. Though it does get a decent time. But it's just drama free. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that because it doesn't have a lot of power, it doesn't get itself into trouble. It it manages to put down the power that it does have without a whole lot of wheel spin. There's a little bit there, but not a great deal of wheel spin. And because there's not a lot of wheel spin, the back end just stays behind where it's supposed to be. Uh, it does get slowed down somewhat by bushes, but not as bad as some um, lightweight supercars and sports cars like we saw last week with the Panthera especially. Um, it struggled a lot with bushes. Um, or for me, uh, 20 minutes ago with the Panthea, because I've been doing both videos in the same day. Uh, I'm actually way ahead on my YouTube production schedule. It's kind of freaking me out just a little bit. But I'm never that far ahead. I'm usually like a day or two ahead, and that's about it. But look at this thing go. Like, even this last little climb is just... It's not quick, but it's drama-free. And it's up. Making the final climb, and we're there. Three minutes... Will it off-road? Yeah. It barely, barely got over that three-minute mark. Um, I, that's a third of a second. There's 21 frames there at the end. I know it looks like the decimal, but it's actually, if you look, it's counting the 60 and then resetting. You have 60 frames per second in the video, and that's just the way Adobe does a time encoder. There is a way to get it to count tenths, but it's not the easiest thing in the world. Um, and would like triple my editing time. So I'm not going to do that. We're going to just do a tense and I will convert it uh, via calculator. Oh, I got two hiker. Oh, shit, indeed, hiker. Wow. Let's do it. Just... <laughs> oh, ooh, ah, shoot it down. Anyway, with that time of just over three minutes, the Broadway out of 384 vehicles that we have tested as of this video is 166. So. You know, not the best, but a good mid-pack car. Uh, it is 0 0.17 sec seconds slower than the Monroe. And it turns in the exact same time as the LG RH8. It does, however, get 166. The LG gets 167 just because of the way Google Sheets sorts things. I guess because LG E is after B. I think it's actually the class that did it. Uh, M comes before S, muscle before sports. I think that's 
why it got the 166 over the LG. I don't know for sure, though. It's hard to say, because uh, I just sort by time, and it put them in that order on its own. Uh, but yeah, tied with an LG RH8, which is really impressive. An all-wheel drive sports car, yeah. In terms of the 47 muscle cars that we have tested, it's 47th, so in the top third. Uh, 1.05 seconds slower than the Vajero ZX. Yikes. But I landed it. As the suspension creaked, I landed it. And I'm not going to try to get back up on the trail. I'm just going to drive over to where it is. It is 2.27 seconds faster than the weaponized Tampa. In terms of LS Drug Wars vehicles, out of the 14 that we've tested, as of this video, it's 8th, so not the best. Uh, 0 0.37 seconds slower than the Entity MT and 2.97, so basically 3 seconds faster than the Tulip M100. Uh, so an actual muscle car, this thing did better. And again, yeah, the, the Tulip M100 is going to beat the pants off this thing in a race around the track and drag race, whatever. This did better on the mountain because it's low power. <laughs> and because of that, it never got in trouble. Uh, and that pays off sometimes. But we are down two minutes, 40 seconds. So we're going to take it back to the top of Mount Chiliad. Good job, letting on the mule hobo. We're going to fling it off the side. It looks like it's about to rain, but it's not. Uh, and we're going to see what type of damage this takes. And at the beginning of the video, I mentioned our friend Classic. If you don't follow him on Twitter, make sure you do. He uh, posts some cool stuff, especially with each DLC. He shows all the unreleased vehicles. Um, he's usually one of the first that has, like, pictures of them. Uh, and that's always appreciated. I usually, like, usually, like, before I even have gotten the update downloaded, he's posting pictures, it seems like. I don't know how he does it. Um... He has some magic, magic ways. But he is one of many channel supporters um, that gets access to a behind-the-scenes version of a lot of my videos uh, that are ad-free, first of all. They are less edited, so you get to see some outtakes and things like that. And they also, instead of featuring this commentary... Oh, my car stalled. And then I got booted and my car still stalled. But instead of featuring this commentary, they actually have our Discord conversation. Um, so you get to hear all the shenanigans that we're up to. Uh, I think it's the better version of the Little Off-Road. That's just me personally. Uh, it's the one I enjoy watching more. Mainly because I don't want to hear myself talk for 20 minutes. I want to remember the fun that we had. And you can take part of that fun if you're part of the Vainglorious Discord server as well. We record different videos. We do live streams. Um, and all kinds of good stuff on PC. So join us on there. Uh, but I forgot to finish talking about the supporter stuff. One is, one way that you can become a supporter and get access to those behind-the-scenes videos is with uh, Discord memberships as well. Charlie and I just side-by-side -side down through there. And we'll talk more about the supporters video in a minute because we are down in 1 minute 47 seconds. Let's take a look at the damage on the Broadway. Two of the windows are gone. The front lights are missing. Left front fender is really cool, which makes me want a uh, custom version of this so we can hot rod and take the fenders off. Uh, the hood is missing. The left door won't close, and it has slightly bent wheels. And we'll take a look at the two support vehicles that I had with me. Uh, we were joined later by Sparing Donkey for a third. But that's going to bring us to our next vehicle. The Willard Eudora. And oh my god, this thing is a boat. And it's slow, and oh, I love it. <laughs> I just love it. It's just, it's such a unique looking car among all the cars in GTA, and I that makes me appreciate it just for that alone. Um, I absolutely love it. Plus, I like the design options that you can get for it. I think it looks particularly fetching in this green on white. Uh, yeah, I, I just dig it. I really, really do. But anyway, supporters videos. You get the link on the Vanglorious Discord server in the Vanglorious Supporters channel. Uh, either uh, you can you can do the subscription on Discord or one three other ways that require you to link your service to Discord. One, be a channel member right here on YouTube. You can be the first one. Well, not the first one, but you can be the only one. Don't have any channel members right now. That makes me kind of sad. YouTube's always like, here, here's some ideas for doing 
channel memberships and getting channel memberships. And I'm like, yeah, I've done all those things. I talk about it. Uh, I have different tiers for different levels. Uh, when I did have channel members, they you get a shout out at the end of every video, at the end of every live stream. Your name's in there. I do a shout out on social media, everything. You know, I do it all. Everything YouTube says I should be doing. For some reason, I just don't get a lot of supporters. I don't know why. But um, the second way is by being a subscriber on Twitch. Whether you pay for it, you Switch Prime, or if it's gifted to you. Or if you make a monthly pledge over on Patreon.com forward slash Fanglorious. All those get you access as well. And I appreciate any support that you can show for my channel. Whether it's financial or just by watching my videos and hitting the like button and leaving a comment. Liking a video and leaving a comment does huge things. It really does. The more likes, the more comments, the more YouTube sees people engaging with that video, and therefore they promote it to more people. Uh, especially the earlier on it gets those likes and comments after it goes live, uh, the better it'll do every single time. Every time. And this, I got stuck. Absolutely stuck. I got spun out of the bush, and I was actually reversing, but the car was trying to go forward. Um, it finally got unstuck. I don't know if I was wedged into the rock somehow or if the bush just had a really firm hold on that left front wheel or what, but I was just stuck. And that, of course, cost the Eudora a lot of time. Not that it was going to get anything special to begin with, because just like the Broadway before it, in fact, a little worse than the Broadway before it, it is, it's a big, lazy V8. You know, it... It doesn't get in a hurry going anywhere. It never really turns more than, like, probably 2,500 RPM. You know, it just... It's it's just never in a hurry at all. It's not geared well to, to be able to, to do what we're asking it to do. doesn't mean we're not going to ask it to do it anyway, because, you know, it's what it offers. That's the whole point, to find out. Can it get up the mountain? And anything that's under a good three minutes, we say, is pretty decent off-roading. Anything over, we say, yeah... You can, but you probably don't want to. And that's a good general rule. There's a, a few that have gotten over three minutes that I'm like, yeah, take it off road because it's fun. There's a few that's under three minutes that I'm like, no, you don't want to do this because it's terrible. Even though it got up the mountain fast. But we're making our final little climb. It's doing all right. It's just but like the Broadway. You know, it, it's mostly drama free. This one just struggles with the bushes more. That's really, I think, the main difference between the two. When it comes to off-roading, because you know it's doing this climb again, drama-free, though it does have a much bigger turning radius. But we're up three minutes, nineteen seconds. So will it off-road? Yeah, I mean, if you want to, <laughs> if you want to pack like nineteen of your friends into a car, including like ten in the trunk. The trunk is huge. Uh, you can, yeah, and you'll be fine. Oh, Donkey wasn't in his car. I'm like, we're leaving. He's like, well, crap, gotta get my car. Um, yeah, he, he, he joined us after we got done recording uh, the ascent. He made his way up, so we had to wait for uh, nighttime to go away. I try not to record at night, because I know a lot of you watch on mobile, and I know it's hard to see the dark scenes on mobile, because I love my viewers. So the Eudora, for performance and stats, 248 out of 384 vehicles. It is... 0.55 seconds slower than a VF Raptor. All right, then, Ducky. And a 0.78 seconds faster than a Gauntlet Hellfire, which is kind of interesting. This goes to show, though, that, you know, the Gauntlet Hellfire struggled because it doesn't turn the best and it doesn't put down its power the best of the day. And this got a similar time, even though the Hellfire would just run circles around it on, on asphalt this did better up here because it doesn't have a whole lot of power and so it never gets itself into too much trouble. Out of the 47 muscle cars that we have tested, it is 29th. 2.12 seconds slower than the Coquette Blackfin and of course the same uh, time separation from the Gauntlet Hellfire as a moment ago. In terms of LS Drug Wars, out of the 16 that we have tested, it is 11th. 16.03 seconds slower than the Tahoma Coupe. And a minute 58.08 faster than the Brigade 6x6. So, yeah, that's no big surprise. So, because the Brigade 6x6 did terrible, because it's just a big, long truck that is difficult to get up the mountain. And it has very, very strange physics. Coming down the mountain in this was a little scary, because this does not have very good brakes. Um, 
so I didn't push as hard as I did in uh, other vehicles that we tested on the same day. Uh, I just I didn't want to wind up falling off the mountain. I just didn't have that confidence that the brakes would be able to uh, save me if things got a little tricky. So I, I didn't try. I mean, I'm still going faster than, you know, super cautious. You know, I'm not just stopping going, stopping going. But it's definitely... Uh, there's a far uh, far greater deal of hesitancy uh, to get on the throttle uh, too hard. Because I just don't want to... I just want to drive off the mountain. That's all it really comes down to. But we're off the mountain. We're down on the asphalt. And it has a massive train circle. And look at that body roll. Oh, it's so great. I love this car. I, I really do. I just like everything about it. I don't care that it's not fast. I, I love how it how it is. Everything. It's just, it's it's great. We're down 2 minutes, 44 seconds. There goes Hobo flying over. I don't think we're going to see the other tape. Guess not. Um, and as the uh, Stolen Vehicles Challenge is underway, we're off. And didn't get the best launch right away, but then... I kind of managed to land that a little bit and land that a little bit and get a kickflip. There I got a good bounce. There I got a good bounce. And here I'm just up out of everything. So I'm miles ahead of everybody else. I just got a really good run uh, through a lot of this. Hit that rock. Got stuck for a second and I'm still way ahead of everybody. I, they were... I think one of them was clearing the train tracks as I finished this damage to say. Uh, it just, it's kind of unreal. Look at it just flip through the air, though. Every little thing it hits, it just, it's just over-exaggerated because there's just so much surface area to just see spinning around, and I love it because of that. Oh, we're missing some doors. Can't pull off and thread the needle in something this long. I don't know why. I was even thinking I might, but I gotta admit, though, for, for the way this car handles and what it is, I think it did a pretty good job of driving it. And up once again, failing to get over the wood pile, gonna play turtle for a minute. Ooh, we have some engine damage going on. And there's just a little bit of an engine rattle there. But we are down one minute, 18 and a half seconds. So let's take a look at the damage on the door. The headlights are gone. There's one taillight missing. The right doors are gone. The left doors will not close. The wheels are bent, especially the front ones. Does have engine damage and just a little bit there on the right rear quarter panel. A uh, slight bit of body damage. We will take a look at our support vehicles. There they are. Also pretty battered up. And that's going to do it for this week's World Off-Road. We'll be back next week with the Hot Ring Everon and the Brocade 6x6. And then after that, I don't know. We'll have to see when the board gets released because that's going to be done with the Issy Rally. Uh, those are the two remaining vehicles from this DLC. And then we'll do World Off-Road with Races. We also have some more uh, Megas Games videos coming uh, interspersed in between all that. So again, thanks for watching. My pleasure to bring you these videos. They're a lot of fun to make. And until next time, I'm Brandon reminding you to stay vainglorious.